Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, uh, a variety of other places when you search for my name David Rao or Make Moments Matter. Um, so tonight I'm excited because I'm going to be sharing a little bit um, some of my lessons from this week. I'm going to be talking specifically about um, using rhythm reading and non-pitched instruments and just a way to sort of elongate and um, draw out some of those lessons. I'm going to talk specifically about how I'm doing it currently with my third graders, but I think it's something that could be adapted for younger or older, depending on what sort of content you want to uh, include. So that's coming up in just a second. Um, if you hear about a resource, a book, a video, something in this um, video, or any of my Musical Monday videos that you're interested in, there's a whole page on my blog dedicated to all of the stuff that I talk about. Just click on my blog. Um, in the video tab and there should be a drop down for this current school year and you can find all the info there or if you're watching listening there's probably um, a at the bottom of the caption for this video a direct link if you're interested you can also join there's a Facebook group called every moment matters music education community you can ask questions see other people's questions comment make friends it's a great place to learn together so come and join us if you're on Facebook okay a couple quick um, like housekeeping things um, if you're interested in taking ORF Level 1, I am a part of a great ORF Level course um, in Orlando. It's the Central Florida ORF Chapter course. Um, I'm teaching Level 1 Pedagogy, um, and Kelly Wisenand and Michael Vasquez are teaching a, a Recorder and Movement for Level 1. If you're interested in taking Level 1, come join us in Orlando. It's going to be so much fun. You can go to Disney on the weekend, or whatever, or go see you know, rocket launches and stuff. It's very exciting. Come join us. Uh, so uh, that's this summer. If you're interested, I have a link on the links page to where you can sign up if you're interested in North Level 1. Um, okay, let's see. Well, another thing. There is a gift card giveaway going on right now on my Facebook page. I put a link to that in the links page um, because there's going to be a sale on TPT tomorrow and Wednesday, and you can win a $10 gift card from me and then some of my other friends are also doing gift cards and you can they're linked there on that um, thing and you get a chance to win to uh, win a gift card from any of us all of us i don't know multiples i don't know it's enter them all so anyway go uh check it out um that's a uh, thing you can do and then tomorrow there's a sale and wednesday there's a sale um so i've linked that as well okay so let's talk about um some lessons and things you can do and i'm really sorry that um Last week, my sound cut out, and then, like, think the week before, the video randomly shut off for one thing, and this... I'm going to have some technical difficulties, so if you are, like, wherever you're sitting, watching, listening to this, if the sound cuts out, if something isn't working, please, like, leave a comment, like, hey, can't hear you, because <laughs> I do check the comments, um, and that will definitely help me. Okay, so, my third graders just got done with the concert cycle. Um, they were just preparing for our family folk dance night, which we did just a couple weeks ago. Um, and so now we're sort of like picking up where did we leave off? What do we need to do next? Um, coming up in third grade, they're going to be doing 16th notes. So um, one of the things I wanted to do was to uh, bring in some non-pitch instruments because we haven't played those in a while because, again, we were focusing most on, mostly on folk dancing. I wanted to do some rhythm readings for the um, note values and rests that like they already know and should have a pretty good understanding of but i also wanted to be able to incorporate some like improvisation and like you know what else can you do with this um and i wanted them to have some uh movement around the room so like that's a lot of things to try and include in one lesson but i got a lot of that and so i wanted to share sort of how i did that and what you could maybe do if you wanted again you could level this for younger or older depending on the the content you want to include or the rhythmic, the, the note values, it's totally up to you. But um, basically my third graders came in, we did sort of an opening activity, um, and then this was sort of the, the bigger, bulkier part of the lesson. I only have 30 minutes with kids, so it wasn't that long. Um, but basically up on the screen, I put this, and I'm gonna, uh, this always works so well when I wanna show a screen. See, mm -hmm, there we go, it did not work. Hold on, let me see if I can make this a work um yeah see every time i want to make this work it doesn't want to work for me so let me try this again sorry facebook i know i just said if you can't see something like let me know <laughs> oh 
Ooh, there we go. Okay, sorry. All right, so Facebook, I think you can see that now. Instagram, sorry, I'm going to switch you over. Okay, so this is basically the screen that I show kids. Um, it's just three lines of rhythms, right? Um, I use um, the Takademi system when I speak uh, rhythmic values. It's totally up to you with what you say at your school, but if you hear me say ta di instead of t t or do day or ta te or whatever it is you say at your school, just know um, I'm just reading it the way I read it. Okay, so if I were reading the top line um, in Takademi, I would say ta ta di ta di ta ta di ta ta di ta. If you were doing a Kodai sort of a way, or the, I mean, there are a lot of different ways you might say ta, ti, 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 ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. But again, there's there, we could do a whole video on what rhythm syllable to choose. Um, I, in fact, did a whole blog post about that. If you're interested, I will put that on the links page. But um, so basically with my kids, I was like, okay, just read the top line. Here we go. And so we'd read ta, ta, di, ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta. Okay, now add a clap. Ta ta di ta di ta ta di ta ta di ta. They're super used to that. Uh, maybe I'd say add, change the clap to a pat. Okay, just to get them like adding something sort of rhythmic with that line. Great. Look at the second line. Okay, let's read it. And in my school, when we read half notes, we say ta ta di ta. There's or some people say to ta di ta. It's just again your preference how you do it. I'll just tell you the way I. Say it. So in my school we say ta, ta di ta, ta di ta, ta. Okay, just quick pause sidebar to think about and talk about what do you say for a rest. Um, some people say shh for like a quarter rest. Some people say rest for a quarter rest. I don't say any of that because a rest is silence, right? So like if I'm teaching kids to go like ta di ta, shh. Ta sh is still a sound. In fact, it's a loud sound um, a lot of times. So um, as long as I've been doing this, and this is something I borrowed from my cooperating teacher back when I was student teaching, was in you can still say ta. It's still the value of a ta. It's a ta rest. It's still a quarter note. But instead of saying ta, you can go, you say it, just don't let the sound out of your mouth. My cooperating teacher when I was student to student teaching was like, you can even shout it just as long as you don't say it out loud. So like ta di ta. Ta. And and kids love that, but I will tell you that kids will start doing like like pretending to shout as loud as possible for more than one beat. So like maybe don't do that because, or, or just think about that because they will then inflate the note value. It'll go too long. Anyway, so with that line, let me switch back. With that line, that second line, there's so there's a half note. Ta, ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta quarter rest ta right so we would just say ta that second measure would be ta di ta ta and then the bottom row has a half rest in it and that's a great review for them because that's something that came up for them in second grade and so we would read that ta di ta ta di ta di ta ta easy peasy the second line though gets interesting when i say can you clap it so then they get into how do you clap a half note and okay, again, I'll just show you what I do at my school. Um, so when we're speaking it and clapping it, we say ta, we clap our hand, and then we do like a little wave. Ta, so it's like our hand moving through the air to show that duration of two beats. Um, it doesn't like, it's not like ta, which really would probably be better because it's giving sound for those two beats. But again, it was just ta. And so kids have a little conundrum if I say, okay, you wanna, you can add a clap while you speak it. They can do that. But if I say now only clap, well then the half note doesn't, if you're not looking, if you're not seeing that visual like swipe of the hand, it sounds like a quarter note quarter rest. So they're like, how do you do that? So then we talk about you like ta, you could like scrape or swipe or whatever you wanna do to try and add some sound, ta, ta di ta. But you can't do something like I mean, it's sort of tricky, can, you know, can you do something without making it sound like 16th notes or 32nd notes or whatever? You know, can you do something that is just like a ta, ta di ta. So that gives, it throws sort of a, a wrench into their, how do you clap this? And that is going to come back later on purpose. So we just, we talk about it, we explore a couple things and then we move on. And then the next question is, well, how do you clap 
a half rest. And it's the same sort of idea of like, you can show duration with movement of your hand or something, but you can't really, you can't make a set. You just, there's going to be that two beat, those two beats of silence. But for my kids, I still have them wave their hand because I find that if they don't do something like that, they'll come in too early. So to feel that duration, I let them still move their hand as if they're doing a half note, but then they just don't make sound, if that makes sense. The, the like the action gives them something to like sort of serve as a placeholder for those those beats of rest. Otherwise, inevitably, they'll cut the rest short and come in too early because they're just excited to move on. So this all starts with like just reading these three lines um, up on the board, super simple. And then one of the things that I do is I take, um, I don't have any handy, of course, because I want them. Um, I take some letters and I just, well, actually on my, I project this up on my whiteboard and I write, on the top line I write A, on the second line I write B, on the third line I write C. Just so kids, when they see it, they see line A, line B, line C. So when we do that, um, then, um, kit, you know, they've, they've read through each line, they're familiar with each line, and then I say, you know, this is really great. We clapped it, we tried to pat it. I was like, let's add some instruments. And so I say, here are the instruments we're gonna use today. And this is sort of what I pull out. And I pulled, I made these decisions, you can make decisions about instruments that you want based on your inventory, but the reason I chose these was I knew I was gonna divide my, my classes into four groups. And that would mean I'd need to have four to six instruments at least um, to make all my rotations work. So I, I chose things that like I knew I had enough of um, and things that would give some little contrast. So um, things that I chose um, to use, one group had wood blocks, okay? Um, and you know, I prep kids about how you might use a wood block. Um, one, one group had egg shakers. One group had uh, claves, and one group had um, these drum shaker things. You've maybe seen me talk about these before. Um, these are from Luminote, um, and they're these like funny little, it's like a shaker, but then also it has a little membrane on both sides. So it's sort of fun because you can shake it. If you put a finger down, it sounds different. Put down two fingers, it sounds very different. You can pat. I like it. It's a fun little weird instrument. I don't know. It's I have enough that I have like four to six or something. So I, I had enough to do it. But the reason I did this was I wanted two instruments that would not give, um, that were not you're not able to use for a sustained two beat, like for a half note, and things that you could. Now the egg shakers are not perfect, and the shakers are not perfect because you have to go like ta right. Like you have to um, you have to shake it to give those two beats, but. It's something, I could have gone with something like um, finger symbols, and I could have gone with something like a triangle or something like that, but <clears throat> that would, if you just play it, it rings for a long, long time, not necessarily just two beats, and so this really sort of goes longer, so then kids would have to play and then dampen. So the thing I like about like an egg shaker is they have to sustain that two beats. They have to keep it going. Um, it's not like they just like hit it and let it go, like they actually have to um, let it play on its own. So one of the things that has come up when I'm talking with through this with the kids is like some kids I'll say like, well, you can't really clap a half note. Um, can you sing a half note? And they're like, yes, we can sing because you can hold that sound out. Great. Can my piano play a half note? Uh, yep, it sure can. What if it's an organ mode? Yes, it sure can. What if I play the, and I pull out, you know, examples. What if I pull out like tone blocks? No, that doesn't give me two seconds. What if I pull out um, finger symbols? Yeah, longer than two seconds. I had one kid who's like, I will time you on my watch. Like he, he was like, can you sustain for as long? What about um, sleigh bells? Sure, you can make it work. But basically I had um, kids come up and I had like one group of kids got claves, one group of kids got wood blocks, one group of kids got egg shakers and one got these drum shakers. And then we went back through and we played um, some of these lines. So let's go and look at those again. So like if you're gonna play, ooh, let me see if I can flip the camera around. Okay, so like if you're gonna play line one on a wood block, that's really easy. Ta, ta, di, ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta, easy peasy. You can also do it on egg shaker. Ta, ta, di, ta, di, ta, 
ta di ta ta di ta it's when you get to that second line that things become really tricky and we've had some really fun conversations because kids would say like okay like on claves you can't play the half note ta ta di ta ta di ta ta like the half note you can't really play it and sustain so it doesn't really sound like a half note it sounds like a quarter note and quarter rest with like an egg shake you can ta ta di ta ta di ta but what we did talk about was with the quarter rest and with the half rest if you have an instrument like an egg shaker if you move it at all it is going to make a sound right so like in some ways those instruments that shake let me turn this back to give it that example in some ways those instruments that like shake and move they're fun they're nice for like the half note right but then if you're trying to have a rest if you like move it it's making sound, so you have to be very careful. So it's it was fun for kids because some kids are like, ha ha, I have the egg shaker. This is superior because it can play the half note. And I was like, but then also you have to be careful because during a rest, it still is making sound if you're moving. So you have to be very still. Whereas the kid with the wood block is like, you know, like move, dancing around. He's like, I'm not making any sound. So um, it was just like fun to have those conversations about like, how does it work? Um, if you're going to play, can you play? And then of course, then we rotate. So like, uh, my classes are broken up into four groups, so then like the front line goes to the back and then everybody moves up or whatever, however you want to do the rotation. Um, but I try and get every kid on an instrument that can sustain and an instrument that cannot so that they get both experiences. And because I chose these things like a woodblock and claves and then an egg shaker, a drum shaker, it's like if they don't get to one of the four okay but they're going to get on a wood instrument and they're going to get on a shaking instrument so like sort of similar experiences then to like take this further um another thing i would do is like i said you know like play line a play line c play line b well then because i had already labeled them a b c then i was like oh great play this pattern and i showed a thing that said a b a b so they'd go through and play the a line play the b line play the a line play the b line and I'd say like, okay, maybe just shakers this time, just woods this time or whatever. So there's a, like infinite variety. And if you go through with like different combinations of the lines, there's so many things you can do um, to like extend this further if you want. Of course, kids will want to rotate. You could always change out the instruments. You could have a different variety of instruments. You could change, if you wanted to, you could change the three lines of rhythm and give them different rhythms to work on. But I find that like with this just like very basic three lines, it it gives me a lot of possibilities to work with even without like, oh, there are 85 pages of rhythms. Like we're using the same rhythms but they're playing them on different instruments. They're playing them in different ways. Sometimes I'm saying say the words. Sometimes I'm saying don't say the words, only play. Um, I mean, there's like so much that you can get out of this without putting in like, I sat there for an hour making all these different slides. You don't need to. Just take these slides and like use it, reuse it, rework it in different ways. The other thing that's cool is like if you say to kids like you have line A, line B, line C, now play A, B, A, C. Now play C, C, A, A. Now play, play A, B, 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 A or whatever. You're giving, you're, you're showing them like you can take this little material and reuse it and put it in a different pattern, put it in a different form and reuse it in lots of different ways and you don't have to recreate the wheel every time and they become very comfortable with those patterns and then they're able to sort of start improvising. So like a next step also could be create your own line D and that would be two measures, right, of whatever. And they could create it with a partner, they could create it on their own and have their own little bit that they could insert as they wanted um, or just freely improvise for two measures. So eight beats worth of, of rhythm. That's like another next step that you could do if you wanted to. So again, very simple, but something that's like, because I wanted to review half notes and half rests, I wanted to review playing non-pitched instruments, um, this hit a lot of those objectives all at once. Um, a couple other things that was really fun was that when we did wood blocks, like any time we play wood blocks, I always have kids who set the wood block on the floor and try and smack it. And I am super not a fan of that because that ends up in a lot of broken mallets and um, it doesn't sound as good. and they just then it becomes like a hammer so you know i always say like at each of these instruments you have to hold in your hand okay so then hold in one hand play with the other and then they start discovering you know you play in different places 
I don't tell them where to play. Like, of course, I in my head, I'm like, there would be great if you could play in this one specific spot. But I, I let them sort of discover how to play best on their own because then they feel more ownership about, oh, this sounds good. Why does it sound good? Well, it's a little louder, a little more resonant or whatever. Um, and they, they can decide that based on their experience exploring the instrument. That's fun for woodblock. Like, who says woodblock is is like the most fun but this actually is a fun activity for woodblock um it's also fun if you give them finger symbols because some kids really struggle with that because they're like how do i you know to let them dangle and 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 ring and then trying to dampen them like the kids like that challenge they really enjoy that um so that's a fun um thing too the other thing would be claves so i've ordered some of these cool things called clave companions they're on back order um, but they basically just hold your clave so that it sounds really great all the time because kids will naturally like hold them like rhythm sticks and click them and that sounds okay. But um, if you uh, again, if you want to have this talk with kids and like get a really cool sound out of it, um, I was taught by a percussionist like you make your hand look sort of like a hot dog um, bun. And here's the hot dog. But instead of the hot dog going down in the bun, it just sits on the very, very top like you haven't opened the hot dog bun enough that it can't go all the way down into um, like the bun. So it's like sort of sitting on top. So you make sort of a little cradle in your hand and then you set the clave on top. So then instead of sounding like this, then you get a much nicer sound. Now these cool things called clave companions do all that work for you, but the ones that I ordered in like September are still on back order. So they're coming, but they're not here yet. So anyway, the cool thing is that like if you teach kids to do this, they can hear the difference. Ooh, and this one sounds way cooler. And it presents a challenge to them. Can they do this? So it's fun to be able to like have a little bit of technique moment while you're doing just like basic rhythms um, and give them a few challenges. That's why it's also nice to like not have like 35 different instruments out and just have like four because then kids can work with one another. You can work them through slowly and they can have a little bit more mastery of that instrument before they move on and they're better at it before they move on. Okay, so like I said, I chose for my four groups, woodblock, claves, I had a bunch of those, egg shaker and the, the drum shaker. And I'll try and find a link and put a link to this in case you're interested. Um, but you, like I said, you can use whatever you want. If you want to use a more complex rhythm than what I showed, you totally can. But the cool thing about this for me then is then later in a few weeks, once we have... Um, like we've added 16th notes well then i can add that in and when i when i add in 16th notes then we can have a whole nother discussion about like well is this instrument suited for playing 16th notes and why and sometimes in those cases like the finger symbols they're good for long sustaining notes but they're not so good for 16th notes and why because you have to manipulate them differently and so it's like fun to have this conversation but if you have it now about these simple rhythms then when you add another rhythm value for like 16th note or whatever it is you're going to do next then you can like remember we talked about this already it's sort of preloaded in their brain and then you can have that conversation and it can grow and encompass more later Okay, like I said, this is third grade for me right now, but it could be second grade, it could be first. You'd have different conversations if you did. It could be fourth or fifth. It depends on where you want to take it and what content you want to include, but you have a lot of options. Okay, cool. Well, if you have any other thoughts about like how this might work for you or you've done something similar or you think like, oh, that's interesting, I have a question, please leave those comments and questions in the comment section. I always come back and check them um, whenever I can to try and uh, check in. Um, also, remember there's a gift card giveaway right now on my Facebook page if you wanna go enter that giveaway. It's for the TPT sale that starts tomorrow and runs through Wednesday. Um, and oh, one, oh yeah, and come and join us uh, this summer in Orlando for ORF Level 1. I hope you'll come and join us. It's going to be a super great time. There are still spots available for Level 1 if you want to come and join us. And uh, the link on my links page will give you uh, take you to the place where you can learn all the information, or you can message me and ask me about it if you're interested. Okay, that's all for tonight, everyone. Thanks so much for coming along. I'll see you next week. Have a great night. Bye, Facebook. Have a great night. Thanks, y'all.